Another season, another AFC Championship game appearance for the Patriots. Seven in a row, 12 in the Brady-Belichick era, and we're going to go through the three keys to a Patriots victory under the assumption that the Patriots are not going to have to amputate Brady's <laughs> right hand. We know it hurts. We don't know the extent of it just yet. I think we're really going to find out after kickoff on Sunday afternoon. So, again, we're just going to operate under the assumption that they're going to be able to run at least a good portion of their normal offense. So, number one, protect Brady, something that we say every single week. But this week, uh, it really amplifies, not just because of the hand injury, but because the Jaguars' defensive front, at least their top four guys, have 42 and a half of their 55 sacks. And the Patriots played tremendously. I think their offensive line is coming off their best game of the season against the Titans. They need to do an even better job against the Jaguars. Everybody knows uh, the way to beating the Patriots is getting to Tom Brady. It's making him uncomfortable in the pocket. It's coming at him right up the gut, right up the middle. If they're able to stop this awesome uh, pass rush that the Jaguars have, they'll have success. I mean... Last, last week, uh, the Steelers did a very good job at basically keeping them at bay. Ben Roethlisberger was able to throw for a million yards. They scored a ton of points. They didn't win the game. Um, but, you know, Roethlisberger was able to basically throw the ball all day long. He, he did have a, uh, uh, an interception and a, and a fumble return. But he was able to be comfortable enough in the pocket to, to basically run their offense. The interception set up an easy touchdown for the Jaguars offense. The fumble <laughs> return obviously was a touchdown for the Jaguars defense. So there's 14 free <laughs> points right off the board because the protection broke down. So when you score 42 points, how do you lose? You give them bonus points and the Patriots can't do that. The offensive line is primarily responsible for making sure that doesn't happen. Number two, the Jaguars play a basic cover three defense. This is something that really is installed the first day of, of offseason workouts. And I quite frankly don't know if they ever got to the day two stuff because that's all the Jaguars really play. There, Obviously, there's some variations, but it's very similar to what the Seahawks threw at the Patriots or what the Seahawks have run for their duration under Pete Carroll. Todd Wash, their defensive coordinator, is a Carroll disciple. And really, it's the same stuff. And the Seahawks, I applaud the Seahawks for saying, you know, the we do what we do because we do it well type of mentality. The Jaguars have the same thing, and quite frankly, I, I understand why. But they're not as good as the Seahawks. Their linebackers aren't as good as Wagner and KJ Wright. Their safeties, I mean, nobody's got as good as safeties as Earl Thomas and Cam Chancellor. So they're vulnerable over the middle of the fields. We could get into a 20-minute discussion as to why this is, as long as Brady's protected, something that he'll be able to explore. Right, and I'm sure, I mean, we saw it in the Super Bowl, uh, Brady going to Rob Gronkowski quite a bit. Uh, they had trouble with, like everybody else, tight ends. Uh, so I'm sure you're going to see a lot of Gronkowski. And again, because they do blitz a lot, you're going to see Amendola getting open quite a bit as well. Use what you got. I mean, it, it kind of falls kind of right into the Patriots' lap. Gronkowski, Amendola, the backs coming out of the backfield. Number three, you got to contain Leonard Fournette the best you can because you don't want Blake Bortles to be in third and short situations. And Fournette is an outstanding running back. I mean, just from him at the combine last year, is one of the biggest human beings I've ever seen. So the Patriots have done a good job against these uh, bigger between the tackles backs. They've had their biggest issues this season against running backs that can stress the edges. Fournette's not really going to do that. You know, TJ Yeldon probably can, but if you can slow down Fournette, you don't allow Blake Bortles to be an ideal third down situations. The other thing is what the Jaguars want to do and will try to do with Fournette is control the clock. Mm -hmm. They'll give it to him all day long, and, and they did it against the Steelers uh, quite a bit in the first half. Control the clock, give the ball to Fournette, have him pound the ball up the middle, Run, 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 run. Keep the ball away from Bortles as much as possible. But more importantly, keep the ball away from Tom Brady and the Patriots offense. Control the clock, and Fournette will just pound it and pound it and pound it. And he gained over 100 yards in that game, and he, he didn't play a lot in the second half because he, he basically re-injured an ankle, 
we'll see how healthy he is coming back in this game. Yeah, you mentioned controlling the clock. This is a game where the Jaguars would ideally like to have each team get maybe seven mm. to nine possessions, and if that's the case, then you keep yourself within striking distance pretty much regardless. And Blake Bortles has become sort of like an internet mm. cult hero, but let's not overstate his value when you turn mm. the ball or when you – the Jaguars have made mistakes in trying to turn this into a passing offense this season when we've seen what happens. He mm. turns the ball over. They've been smarter over the last month or so. If you make Bortles go into these third and seven, third and eight situations, you're going to see him start to make mistakes. Then you're going to see the difference between a Tom Brady and a Blake Bortles. So those are three keys to a Patriots victory. Again, assuming Tom Brady shows up to Gillette Stadium on Sunday afternoon with both hands intact.